Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. It's finally time for me to stop dodging the bullet and to finally compare Ganyu to Xiao. The reason why I was so hesitant to make this video is mainly because of one reason, and that reason is the severe drought of Child's Man Plug. My Xiao's talents will forever be 666. Not only is he cursed by his inner demons, but he is shackled to the will of the Shneznaya Man's Plug's RNG. Since I used the entirety of my 7 plugs on Gan Yu, I've had none to spare for Xiao. At the current rate I'm getting these plugs, it would take around 5 months to get the 12 plugs needed to bring Xiao's talents levels up to be comparable to Gan Yu's talent level. Instead, Mihoyu keeps giving me tusks. I'm about to triple crown Zhong Li at this rate. Anyway, let's take a look at this chart. If Xiao's normal attacks are at level 6, instead of level 10, he loses 36% of his plunge damage. If his burst is at level 6, instead of level 13, he loses 10.76% on his overall damage. These two losses in damage are multiplicative and lead to a 50.64% loss in total damage. There is no way I could in good faith use my own Xiao to compare to my own Gan Yu. My Gan Yu has level 10 normal attacks, so she's maxed out on her main source of damage. But then I realized I could still make this video. I don't actually need to compare the two of them at their max potential. With the power of math, I can compare them at around a well-invested free-to-plays level of power. So then I calculated how strong they would be with maximized damage at Constellation 6 with their best Refinement 5 weapons, the Primordial Jade Wing Spear for Xiao and the Amos Bow for Gan Yu. Xiao's plunge would do 47,232 damage per plunge, and Gan Yu's bloom would do 51,047 damage per bloom. Then I calculated my own Xiao's average damage output with his plunges, which is 19,198 damage, and I realized that my Xiao is at about 40% of a maxed out Xiao's potential, at least for plunge damage. So knowing this, all I have to do now is to lower my Gan Yu's power to around 40% of her maximum potential. FYI, my Gan Yu is around 80 to 90% of her maximum potential with the Blizzard Strayer set. But after mixing and matching some weapons and artifacts, for my Gan Yu's current Blizzard Strayer build, removing the timepiece and swapping to the Prototype Crescent brings her average bloom damage down to 20,659, which is 40% of a maximized damage Gan Yu's potential. This may seem absurd that my Gan Yu with Prototype Crescent is at 40% versus my Xiao with the Primordial Jade Wing Spear. But I cannot emphasize this enough, that's how important leveling your talents are. You lose 36% of your damage simply by having a level 6 talent versus a level 10 talent. Anyway, this first setup is against targets with a weak point. So against targets without a weak point, I have to add this HP% percent timepiece with some decent crit stats. And this mostly compensates for her lack of the Prototype Crescent's weak point buff, and she's at around 38% of her max potential. That's pretty close to Xiao's 40% max potential. Starting off, we'll be using these two Gan Yu's to face off against my 40% potential Xiao. Frankly, I should have done this type of normalization in my other DPS showdown videos, but this thought hadn't occurred to me until now. Normalizing for gear based on a character's maximum damage potential seems like a much fairer way to close the gap between artifact quality, weapons, and talent levels. But don't worry, because in this video, not only will I be comparing well-invested Constellation Zero, Xiao and Gan Yu, I'll also compare Xiao and Gan Yu both at Constellation 6 with decent gear, and finally, I'll compare optimally whaled speedrunners. So we'll get to see these characters compete against each other at different levels of power. Starting off, we'll be using my Prototype Crescent with HP% percent timepiece Gan Yu against multiple bosses that have no weak points. As I mentioned earlier, this Gan Yu is at 38.26% of her maximum damage potential, while Xiao is at around 40%. The first comparison is, of course, against my favorite volunteer, the Regis Vines. <laughs> So that was pretty impressive. Both of these characters were able to quickly dispatch of their respective Regis finds. 
Ganyu's burst is super effective against these plants due to their massive hitboxes. This helped Ganyu quite a bit against the Pyro Regisvine. For Xiao, I utilize his plunge charge attack combo, which improves his single target DPS, especially against large and mobile targets. Utilizing this tech, he was able to come within a second of Ganyu's time. For all intents and purposes, this can be considered a tie. The next fight will be against every showcase video's favorite punching bag, Devalin. I was both surprised and also not surprised by the results of this fight. Starting off with Gan Yu, her burst is not very good against the Volan. However, it was still worthwhile enough to use against the Volan because a few icicles do connect and it increases her cryo damage, allowing her to take out Devalin in one less shot. This is an example of a situation where Ganyu's burst isn't as effective. Meanwhile, Xiao actually overperformed compared to my expectations. And this is because, unlike other melee characters, he doesn't really have any issues getting to the top of Devalin's neck, so Ganyu doesn't actually have this advantage over him. And the next thing that I noticed was that Xiao's plunge through hitbox actually hits the Volan fairly consistently. This is a major improvement to a single target DPS if the plunge through hit can connect. Combining this with the charge attack jump cancel, Xiao's single target DPS overperformed compared to my expectations. Because of this unique situation, I will have to give this fight to Xiao. But of course, Xiao can't shoot the Volan out of the sky as quickly as Gan Yu can. So Gan Yu beats Xiao in that regard. And also, a whale Gan Yu can do the following every time against the volley. This is something that Xiao just can't beat no matter what. But while both characters are around 40% of their damage potentials, unlike the clip that I showed you where my Gan Yu is insanely geared, Xiao is able to beat Gan Yu in terms of damage output against the volley. The next fight will be against our very stingy Shneznaya man, Tartaglia. He still refuses to drop shadows, so therefore we're going to beat the snot out of him over and over again. Tartaglia is an interesting fight and consists of three phases. I will allow both teams to use Zhongli's shield and also allow an Anemo battery for Xiao in the form of Sucrose. <laughs> This fight ended being remarkably close yet again. Now, Xiao did get more of a benefit from Zhongli's shield than Gan Yu did, but both of them relied on it to make this fight much more consistent. In Gan Yu's run, Gan Yu is gonna Gan Yu. For most of it, she just sits at a safe distance, pelting away. Now, I feel like I need to disclose that this actually took multiple attempts with Gan Yu. Child has many mechanics which caused me to miss a lot of my shots, and every shot that I missed was a loss of two seconds for Gan Yu. For fights that take less than two of Xiao's bursts, I believe that Xiao is able to keep up his momentum quite well. Starting off a fight with two E's and using two E's after his burst is over will almost completely fill up his burst gauge. <laughs> Hup, 
then, just a few more anemo particles from sucrose will allow him to get his second burst up very quickly. I likely could have saved much more time by not missing a plunge and also by optimizing his rotations a bit. But I didn't want this video to be about trying to set records with these characters, but more so compare their practical output. All in all, both characters did quite well here, and due to the very small difference in time, for all intents and purposes, I would declare this fight to be a tie. The next test area I did was in Abyss 12.3. Due to the high HP of the robots, this is a great environment to test characters and their team's damage outputs. For this test, I will allow the use of Bennett and Zhong Li for both parties, as well as having an Anemo character for Xiao and a Cryo character for Gan Yu for their respective resonances. I also chose no offensive cards for both teams to further normalize their damage outputs. For this Gan Yu, because she's able to proc the prototype Crescent's weak point buff, I'm using a slightly different setup with no timepiece, as well as a different feather. And yet again, both of these characters are essentially neck and neck. The differences in time can be chalked up to execution error from me, luck, and other factors. I would yet again consider this to be another tie. Now admittingly, the Ganyu attempt was actually more difficult to me than the Xiao attempt. I had to figure out the timing and sequence for shooting the robot's eyes to maximize the CC she could apply to them. I also gave her a free melt proc at the beginning of the fight. However, after I figured out the strategy, the timing, and the sequence, Ganyu was able to consistently perform at this level. For Xiao, well, it was pretty much strategy free. The main thing I was conscientious of was to not jump too high all the time. Besides the loss in DPS from jumping up too high, the robots will shoot their missiles at you when you jump too high, which can pretty much kill you if you're at the wrong height at the wrong time. Besides that, it was pretty much just spam plunge attacks until they're dead. It's worth noting that if my Xiao was just a little bit more powerful, he could have saved a lot of time here if he was able to one cycle these robots. The next comparison will be between a friend of mine's C6 Xiao and my C6 Gan Yu. Unfortunately, he also has had a massive drought of Shneznaya man plugs, so his Xiao's talent levels are only 6, 10, 9. I calculated his Xiao's damage potential and he's at 42%. So really this will demonstrate how much C6 Xiao's tech can improve his time. And also we'll be comparing Xiao's C6 tech to Gan Yu's C6 tech. We also decided because we're using whale Dao characters, we may as well use an entire team composition for them. He used his Constellation 4 Gene for the Animo Shred, while I used Melt Gan Yu with Xiang Ling. Also, I had to prepare a third loadout for Gan Yu, which is a Melt Gan Yu at 42% of her damage potential. Again, we chose no offensive cards, and I'll just let the runs do the talking. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, we have another run where both characters are extremely close to each other. Now, two seconds is quite a bit of time in terms of difference, but we can chalk that up to my poor execution. Also, our anonymous Discord friend wanted me to emphasize that this took him a lot of runs. And let's see why that's the case. <laughs> Yet 
Yikes. Xiao's Constellation 6 e -e 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 targeting is absolutely atrocious. Xiao will just dash off into the sunset depending on where he ends up after one of his dashes. On top of that, the chances for all six E's to hit both robots is astoundingly low. You might have been wondering why he waited much longer to use his support's abilities, and that's because for Xiao, the robots have to be basically hugging each other for all six E's to have a slight chance to hit both robots. You may have been wondering why he had to jump and spam E instead of doing it on the ground. Just take a look at this clip. You can't spam his E's on the ground against these robots because Xiao doesn't pass through these robots and his E will only hit one of them at a time. Notice how only either the robot on the left or the robot on the right takes damage. C6 Xiao is extremely janky to play. As for Milk Gan Yu, she was performing very consistently, simply needing to delay her charge shots a bit based on Xiangling's Pyronado, and not in the mercy of auto target RNG. Now, Milk Gan Yu is subject to crit RNG, but I'll take that over both crit RNG and auto target RNG. Overall, C6 Gan Yu is just a much smoother experience. Now, our anonymous friend at Discord decided to stop investing into Xiao because of how janky and stanky his C6 tech felt. Let's give our anonymous friend from Discord our condolences. Please subscribe, like, and comment to share your support to him for enduring many, many hours of Constellation 6 Xiao suffering, and quite a lot of buyer's remorse as well. I'll be sure to send him all your kind comments of condolences. <laughs> So I bet you weren't expecting that. Constellation 6 Deluke with Xing Chu's support is able to keep up with Ganyu and Xiao in this situation. Now this Deluke is at 49% damage potential, which is notably higher than Ganyu and Xiao. However, nothing is better than seeing an underdog's comeback. Our anonymous friend on Discord commented about C6 Deluke, saying that Deluke just feels so good and is so consistent in his run. All his times were pretty much within 2-3 to three seconds of this run. Now, it is true that Deluke was still a bit slower, even at a substantially higher damage potential, but I think this is still a great story for our boy Deluke. So now that we've covered a well-invested Constellation Zero Xiao vs Constellation Zero Gan Yu, and we've compared a Constellation Six Xiao vs Constellation Six Gan Yu, let's take a look at Super Constellation Six Xiao vs Gan Yu. With nothing held back, speed running, Abyss 12-3. Wow. Let's give a round of applause to Fob Masters Gan Yu for clean 12, 3, and 9 seconds. Be sure to check out his stream at twitch.tv slash fobmaster. The A is a 4 in case you didn't notice. The link will be in the description below. He's a really cool guy with some crazy overpowered characters. So once we get into the speedrunning territory, character dynamics change drastically. It becomes all about bursting the enemies down as quickly as possible. Now the fastest Xiao run I could find was done in 10.25 seconds, compared to the low 9 second run by Fob Masters Gan Yu. Since I wasn't able to obtain permission to show the Xiao run in this video, you guys can search it up by searching the following, Abyss 12.3 speedrun 10s, and hopefully it will pop up. It's a pretty impressive run demonstrating Xiao's speedrun capabilities as well. So Fob Master's 9 second run is actually really close to becoming an 8 point something second run. This is a scenario where it will come down to micro optimizations to allow his Ganyu to two shot each of the robots. Ultimately though, both of these characters are incredible and are clearly able to output a ton of damage and speedrun content like this. But before wrapping up this video, I did want to talk about the Xiao runs that I did and that an anonymous friend from Discord did throughout this entire video. 
In all of these runs, Xiao had his burst available at the beginning of every single run. For most players, including myself when I'm just playing casually, they'll find themselves without Xiao's burst quite often when they need it. Unlike Ganyu who can always output consistent damage, Xiao is shackled to his burst. Either way though, I'm not willing to declare an overall winner because there will likely be ways for both the top Ganyu players and the top Xiao players to optimize their runs and further shave time off in any speedruns that they do. Just because a character does a very specific mission faster than the other doesn't necessarily mean they're better. They simply might just be better for that specific situation. So, oh man guys, this video took me a ton of effort and a ton of research to do. Let's give a huge round of applause to our anonymous friend on Discord and also to twitch.tv slash fobmaster. I'm too exhausted to come up with a clever way to subscribe, so I'll just try asking you guys to please subscribe, like, and comment. As always, thanks for watching. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.